What's up guys, Kizzle Kicks here bringing you episode number 3 of this FIFA 16 Crystal Palace career mode. As you know from the last episode then we are in the final of the European Shield. Now I know it's only a pre-season competition where it would be nice to bag a trophy so early on into this career mode. That's the trophy that we're playing for and we're taking on Italian side Bologna here in the final having beaten Sassuolo as you can see. Bologna beat Lokomotiv Moscow on penalties so we've rotated the team a little bit again as you can see here Connor Wickham getting a nod up front Kennedy on loan from Chelsea is behind him you've got Balassi and Saha out wide MacArthur Kabai in the middle Soare Hangeland Delaney Ward and McCarthy in the sticks but we got off to a really tough start Bologna came out flying out the blocks really from three minutes in you can see Really good piece of footwork from the striker and they got an effort on goal. Fortunately for us, it was off target. But shortly after the quarter of an hour mark, Mancosu had another effort. He drilled the ball across. Mattia Destro was at the back stick, but he couldn't get enough of connection on it, sliding in and couldn't convert it goalwards. But Bologna continued their pressure. They got in behind the defence again and fortunately for us, managed to miss the target with that chance. Good opportunities then. That's three of them that they've missed. Um, the game could quite easily be out of sight already, but a defensive error then, Balassi's pressure, forcing him into a mistake. Half hour into the game, we're going to get our first chance. It's squared to Connor Wickham. You'd put money on him to score, but a good save keeps the scores at 0-0. And that's how the half ended. You can see Belong, you have had more shots, but dominating in possession, 71%. So percent even shows how dominant they have been and they come out of the blocks really fast for the second half as well Destro chipping the ball in and Giaccarini the former Sunderland man heading just wide of the mark Connor Wickham was the first man we decided to replace we decided to make a change Dwight Gale bringing him on hopefully hoping that his pace will give us more of a threat going forward we hadn't really created any real chances Wickham missing the only one that we'd made so far but a bit of a defensive mix up there a poor clearance from Ward Gave uh, Bologna another opportunity. They hit one from distance. It's blocked by Delaney and it goes wide. You can see now just 15 minutes remaining. Um, we get another opportunity. It's Suare bursting through down the left. He squares it to MacArthur who hits a stunning shot. Looked destined to head for the top corner but just went wide. You can see from the replay, the keeper was absolutely beaten. It goes just inches past the post. And despite being on the back foot for most of this game, we did continue to put a lot of pressure on the ball on Bologna when they were in possession and it eventually paid off and Suarez won it, slid the ball into the channel, Dwight Gale gave chase and then put the ball inside for Jason Punch and leaving him one on one with the keeper. Could he finish? Absolutely. Four minutes remaining, it's Crystal Palace 1, Bologna nil, and it looks as though we're going to get our hands on a piece of silverware so early on in this career, which would be a fantastic achievement and obviously give us some extra transfer budget to spend. All we had to do was hold out for the remaining two or three minutes. Obviously Bologna started to throw men forward. You can see Giaccarini played it forward here. A low cross came in. Suare looked to have it under control, but a poor clearance. Not sure what he was trying to do there. And Destro, with the first time finish, equalising immediately. So really, really disappointed with that. And Bologna actually had the opportunity to win it, but I'm not sure what they were doing there. They completely messed up that attack. They had good numbers forward, meaning the final whistle went and the game was going to a penalty shootout. So rather than commentate over every penalty, I'm just going to be quiet and let you watch the shootout.
So as you saw, we managed to hold our nerve in the shootout and get the win that we wanted. There you see the boys celebrating with the trophy, European Shield champions, more money in the bank for transfer. So we were absolutely delighted with that. On Legendary as well, which seems to be increasingly difficult this year, we were really pleased to get the win. You can see confirmation of it there. Crystal Palace, 5-3 winners on penalties. Lovely stuff. So with the tournament finished, it was time to put our business hats back on. All that's left to complete before we take on Norwich in the opening day is some transfers. As you can see, good news, Eric Dyer from Spurs has accepted the contract offer that we gave to him and he was going to become our first permanent signing, I do believe, 4.3 million, 32 and a half grand a week. Lovely stuff. Scott Dan out, Eric Dyer in. That's the centre-back problem solved. Although I would like to get another. Of course, Eric Hovland, we had our offer for him accepted. He sent us a counter offer saying again I want 45 grand a week or I'm not coming. We decided to up the, the offer to him to 37 and a half grand a week. That's the last, that's probably as high as we're going to go I think with that. But um, we'll see how it goes. You can see additional 2.3 million from winning the, uh, the European Continental Shield. And a little message from the board there just saying congratulations which was a nice touch. So the other centre-back target we were going for, Kurt Zuma, he come back and said he would join if he had a more important role to play at the club. We offered him important first-team status, but he wants to be a crucial first-team player. So we made that happen. I told you we were also looking for a left-back and our eight million bid for De oh, seven million bid, sorry, for De Cilio was accepted. Forty-five grand a week we offered him. Um, important first team player status he would be a player that we would love to bring in to the club he's very young but very experienced at a high level but yes Kurt Zuma the man that we offered the contract for our main centre back target agreed to join he's just 20 years old completely new centre back partnership for us then Eric Dyer and Kurt Zuma they will be the two starting players come the opening day of the Premier League season and you can see offers coming in for some of the youngsters now. Kwesi Apaya, we loan listed him. He's got plenty of place, a lot of potential. I don't want to let him go permanently. He joined Coventry City on loan. And Jake Gray, the young 19-year-old right midfielder, he joined Fleetwood for the season as well. So that means it's opening daytime, Saturday, 8th of August. Norwich versus Crystal Palace at Carrow Road. Not an easy game. You don't know what to expect when you play one of the newly promoted sides. They come in pretty fearless, a lot of pressure. We're going to have a look at the tactics that they're going to play now. You can see they've lined up quite a strong team, really. John Ruddy, plenty of Premier League experience. You've got Stephen Whitaker, Sebastian Bassong, Tete. Nathan Redmond's obviously a very good player. Matt Jarvis, a lot of experienced players in this side. But let's have a look at our own team now. We line up in a 4-2-3-1 formation. McCarthy in goal, Ward and Suarez the fullbacks. New boys, Zuma and Dyer, centre-back partners. Kabai McCarthy in midfield. Saha and Balassi out wide with Sarko behind Dwight Gale, who will play as a lone striker. We're hoping that his pace can be a threat. And it was the home side that had the first opportunity of the game, but fortunately for us, Mbukani couldn't get the header on target. We then create a chance for ourselves. Suarez putting the ball into the feet of Gale, who holds it up nicely. Brings Joel Ward into the attack before getting it back and hitting a first-time shot, which was heading for the top corner and forcing John Ruddy into a good save. And it was that pocket behind the Norwich midfield in front of their defence where we seem to get most of our joy. Sacco, his shot from distance here um, was never really a threat to, to Ruddy's goal. But Norwich out wide causing us more problems. A good turn inside from Umbukani hits a fierce left-footed shot, but again, it was off target. We continue to have efforts at goal ourselves, but we were restricted to strikes and distance. Soiree here, that shot really not troubling John Ruddy at all. Um, just before half-time, a defensive error from Zuma as he tries to prevent the corner. Um, gave Norwich with a fantastic opportunity and Wes Houlihan comes within inches, probably centimetres, of giving his side the lead. You can see how frustrated he is with himself there. McCarthy was beaten, but the header went just wide of the mark. And half-time whistle um, goes, leaving scores at 0-0. No breakthroughs thus far. Norwich probably having the better chances of the two sides. But we had a decent start after the break. Kabai, um, for some reason, finding himself out wide. He has a shot. It falls into the path of Sacco. And I thought that flew straight into the top corner. But unfortunately, it sailed over the bar. Um, but we pick up possession again. Um, we play the ball through to Dwight Gale, who's showed his pace here. Gets the wrong side of the defender. Bearing down on goal. He's brought down from behind. Referee points to the penalty spot. Now... The referee had two choices here. He could have a wave play on, because um, I think it was probably a fair challenge. You can see Martin just gets the ball away. But having given the penalty, he has to give a red card there. He done nothing. He gave the penalty. He didn't book or give Martin a red card, but it doesn't matter because the penalty from Kabai, as you can see there, was horrific. 
That's not even close. Um, and the replay doesn't do him any favours at all. That is a few feet wide. Um, similar to Eden Hazard's penalty. Absolutely awful. Norwich almost made us pay immediately. Umbakani going up the other end. A powerful header forcing McCarthy into a great save. And time is running out for either side to win this game. You can see now we're just nine minutes away from the full-time whistle. Malumbu plays a good ball inside. It's blocked by Dyer. The second effort from Redmond just goes wide of the mark. And I believe that was the last opportunity of the game. So disappointing having had the chance from the spot to get the goal to end 0-0. But a solid point and avoiding defeat on our opening day, which was important. And obviously a clean sheet is a positive as well. So we're going to bring this episode to a close. Having a look at the league table, it's Arsenal who are top, followed by Everton, West Brom, Southampton. Can't read too much into it at the moment. But you can see that draw with Norwich leaves us in 11th place. Um, but one of only a few sides not to concede a goal, which was pleasing. Hopefully we'll have a good defensive record with the two new boys we've got at centre-back. And hopefully that will enable us to, to win some games and pick up some points. As we look to come... I don't know, just above the mid-table position, come as high as we can, maybe, just maybe sneak a Europa League place, but on Legendary, that is going to be really, really tough. So like I said, that's going to bring the episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. I'll leave the links in the description, and we'll see you again in episode four.